Good afternoon and welcome back to the channel. In today's video, I'm going to be uh, sharing and talking about uh, a new uh, Acorn A5000 uh, that I've recently purchased off eBay. Uh, so uh, with this machine, when I uh, turned the computer on, um, it was coming up as a red screen. Um, thankfully, the floppy was flashing, so uh, I took the codes, um, put them into the, uh, the website that's easily found on the, uh, the internet, and uh, it came up uh, showing that uh, the CMOS was unreadable and there was a RAM control line error. Uh, so um, with having a podule, um, an RTC podule um, from uh, I think it was 4D uh, pie shop on eBay, um, I was uh, able to use that and then uh, discount the CMOS error. So uh, when starting up with that plugged in, it was just giving the red uh, screen with the RAM control line issue. So we looked around. Um, obviously, with these machines, when the battery uh, fails, you know the uh, the traces can obviously be in the way and that kind of thing. So I was looking around, and um, you know, on this particular board, it didn't look as if the uh, the damage had actually reached down anywhere near to the uh, RAM control area uh, around the uh, the chip and uh, the the memory chips itself. So I started to have a little play, and um, yeah, I noticed that uh, obviously the machine's got two megs on board, and um, the uh, link 23 was set to position 2 and 3 to say 2 meg on board. So I thought, I'll just start playing around with these. So I was um, trying uh, an external memory uh, card, plugging that into the external memory, putting link 24 on and seeing if that made any difference. It didn't, still a red screen. But I noticed that when I moved uh, link 23 to position 1 and 2, then the machine booted up. But it would only show 1 meg of memory on board. So. Well, okay, um, yeah, something not quite right. Um, so I, I repeated the process, moved the link back to two, three where it should be, and still a red screen. Moved it back, the machine booted with one meg again. Uh, putting the external memory in didn't make any difference whatsoever. It didn't come up with three or anything like that. Um, so I replaced the uh, the chip, controlling the memory uh, lines. Still no good. So I looked around and replaced the capacitors near to the memory uh, positions. Still no difference at all. So I was looking at the um, the traces and there was just literally no damage anywhere. It was all nice and clean on, on that area of the board. So I kind of came to the conclusion that um, you know one of the memory chips that was actually on the board was broken in some way. Um, at least one of them. But I've got no way to test these. So whenever I come across um, a bit of a sort of dead end, I uh, tend to have a little search on Stardot, see if anybody's come up against the same problem, see how they tackled it, just to give me some kind of inspiration as to where to go next with the diagnostic. So I was having a look around and, uh, you know, I, I was coming across all the standard posts that I've come across before when doing these things and I'm thinking, yeah, I've, I've tried that, it's not that, that kind of thing. And then I come across a post where somebody was talking about taking the memory chips off the board and replacing them with some other type, which um, is slightly bigger, uh, which would actually give the, the board a 4 meg upgrade without having to use one of the external uh, plug-in cards. So I had a little look at it and, uh, you know, there wasn't much, um, much chat on there. But, um, yeah, the post was a picture of these uh, chips, these Alliance chips. And then, um, you know, just a quick uh, comment saying, yeah, that's worked. So I thought, okay, fine. So um, I thought, why not? Let's try it. Um, you know, if there is a broken memory chip on there, like taking them all off and replacing them with something totally new, that is a good enough uh, way to diagnose it. So I went on eBay, had a look, and uh, bought some uh, Sims that had these um, these Alliance chips on them with the, the exact same number. Now I'll put the uh, the chip number in the uh, in the description of the video. So if you want to uh, go ahead and uh, buy yourself some, then uh, yeah, you'll you'll know what to look for. But you can see in the video here at the moment what I'm doing is I'm just uh, I'm harvesting the actual chips from the uh, in fact it's not a sim it's a dim the dual dual sided uh, harvesting the chips off the dim here uh, ready for putting onto the board. So using the hot air uh, station and the flux, I'm just taking each of the chips off in turn. So once the board's actually got quite hot from the first chip, 
it's a fairly standard process you just running through to the next one you know it's already been preheated by doing the uh, one next to it so uh, they all pretty much drop off very quickly but yeah be careful they are incredibly hot <laughs> <laughs> nice. No, why uh, when I took them off the board, I actually put them upside down because what I found before is that um, yeah, when I put the hot chip on the wood surface, it actually uh, transferred some of the surface onto the uh, chip legs, and uh, yeah, I didn't want to uh, potentially affect any of these uh, these chips in that way. So now turning our attention to the actual board in the machine, you can see I've already done the solder work because. The soldering for this was not easy, I have to say, I have to admit. Um, I found it quite difficult. Now, I've done a lot of soldering, I think I'm fairly competent. But uh, yeah, these chips with the legs that go underneath them are different to anything that I've done before. So um, yeah, I didn't want the stress of recording it whilst, you know, um, trying and trying and trying again to make these things line up and get the right amount of solder on there and making sure the joins are correct. So uh, yeah, did it off camera. So. Um, yeah, uh, we're just focusing just at the moment on the CMOS area. So you can see that, uh, you know, obviously I diagnosed the machine with the, the Podual RTC, but I've gone back and I've actually uh, now fixed up the chip. So this board actually needed um, a new chip just there. And a few, which I'll be pointing at in a moment, a few of the uh, joins uh, just around the transistor, sorry, resistors were uh, just not quite right either so i'm just pointing there at the two memory banks you can see that obviously i've taken both of them off and uh, replaced just one bank of eight chips with the new chips which i'll zoom in a bit later on So yeah, just going a bit closer in, we can see, uh, yeah, I'm just pointing at the two uh, solder joints there just on the ends of the uh, resistors that go to the first couple of legs on the chip. Um, yeah, they, they just weren't quite meeting the track, so uh, just putting a bit more solder on the join actually uh, made the connection and they were good to go then. So that uh, that new chip and a couple of bits of solder got that, uh, that CMOS working. So, yeah, you can see this board actually is a very interesting board, this one. Um, I've recapped, you know, the, those are the 47 uh, uh, microfarad, I think they are, 47 microfarad, 16 volt. Um, I've replaced all those, but you can see the polarity actually, um, yeah, it's got the blue stripe, which is normally black, but these ones are blue. Um, they're on the plus, on the board, and um, I thought, have I done it wrong? <laughs> I've put the capacitors on the wrong way around. But uh, I always make sure that I take a photo and um, put them on in the right way as they come off. And um, I went back onto the board and had a look and er it's literally every single capacitor on this board is the wrong way around. So I'm not quite sure what to do with that yet because uh, the board's perfectly working. Um, but yeah, you can see me pointing at the, uh, the chip earlier on. Um, that was the RAM control line chip that can give a red screen if that's not working. But... Um, you know, that made no difference when I replaced that. So the actual fix for this board was just new chips. So one of the old ones must have been broken. So here you can see I've got the, uh, yeah, I bought as much of this stuff as I could from the one side. I've taken one side of chips off for this board and I'll use the rest for another couple of boards. I've already now done this twice. So two boards have been done with this technique and it's worked both times. So I'm uh, just trying to give you a close up of the chip there, it's not working very well though. Um, yeah, I'll, uh, I'll nail it in a moment for you though, hang on. <laughs> yeah, if anybody's got any ideas about what we can do about them uh, capacitors, being literally every single capacitor on this board is the wrong way around. Uh, certainly the, uh, the electrolytic uh, SMDs are anyway. If you can leave a comment, should we turn them around? I don't know. It's it's working perfectly like this though. There we go, you can see the chip now. That's an Alliance AS4C14400-60JC. And interestingly with these uh, chips, um, 
they actually work at a faster refresh rate than the uh, the old chips that were on the board. So uh, potentially we could actually maybe overclock this a little bit. So um, yeah, I might get back on Stardust and have a look, see how that's done, and uh, maybe maybe try and make a video out of that too. <coughs> and here it is. This is the uh, well, not quite fully rebuilt, but um, yeah, you can see it's got the. Um, it's got the board and the cards back in again, and uh, yeah, it's all connected up and ready to go now. So we've got the new Alienus chips in, we've got the CMOS fixed. I've actually uh, replaced the fan in that PSU and give it a good clean and stuff as well. So, uh, nice, quiet machine, ready to go. And the startup message goes really quick, um, assuming there's no hard drives in to slow it down. It does show 4096 on that boot screen there as we went through. And task manager, we've got 4096 as well there. So this definitely works. This process works. So if anybody's got a red screen out there and can't quite uh, diagnose it, maybe this is the right way to go. Get the old memory chips off because, uh, you know, they're 30, 30 odd years, 40 years old now, aren't they? Get some slightly newer chips on there and give it an upgrade at the same time. Well, I think that'll cover it for this video. So, um, yeah, thanks very much for watching and, uh, yeah, I'll catch you in the next one. Cheers.